Oh, yes, hello. Uh, I'm Matt Neiman. I'm a painting and drawing major at SUNY Purchase College. This is my senior year. Uh, I work primarily in uh, oils and ink. Um, and I, make, I go outside and see the paint. I paint um, landscapes, on-site paintings and such. And uh, when I come in the studio, I usually do ink based works. And they are, uh, for the most part, just like mine works. Stuff from my head, though. What are you working on right now? Right now, this is kind of uh, these two, this little guy, and this big one here. Those are kind of my current uh, predicaments. Um, I made a little color study over here uh, for this guy, but I'm not sure if I'm going to hold to that. I think there's some interesting things going on in there, but um, I think it needs to be further explored. Uh, where do these creatures come from? Um, mostly they just come from my head. Um, I do keep a sketchbook, or actually these things, they, they mostly come from doodles. Uh, I find that doodling is kind of a, a way to create Images, ideas, kind of, it's kind of a way to digest information and regurgitate it. This guy over here, this must be uh, kind of like an alternative uh, to the traditional uh, dragon concept. Um, he's, not, he's not meant to look scary, he's just like this big goofy. Uh, amphibian like creature with, with wings. Where did that idea come from? These characters are a lot more empathetic than what you would normally expect out of a dragon. Is that something you're thinking about? Yeah, I'm just, I guess so. It, uh, I kind of want to make it more approachable. You know, there's a lot. When you, think, when you see dragons in fiction, they're always spiny and spiky. Uh, a lot more threatening, and this guy is kind of like a big plush doll with the guys. Can you tell me about this character? Uh, that is a... kind of a... Well, that, that, that's, that's based off of Alex, Alex uh, Resolier. I used his face and I put it on, a, on an octopus's body. I was trying to create a creature that had kind of a spawning period. Spawning period, you said? Yeah. Uh, he's kind of laying these eggs and they're all like little uh, manifestations of him. Also, this one relied heavily on a lot of my outdoor works. This is really the first time I took um, studies directly from outside and applied them to uh, uh, to one of my ink uh, projects. So this is new only in ink? You've done this in other mediums? Actually... This is... This, this is... This is... This is new to ink. I, I'd say it's kind of a... It's actually something I haven't really played around with. Um, the idea of going outside and gathering information out there and then bringing it back into the studio and applying that newly obtained knowledge to, to you know, other works. What do you do with the information from outside? How does it how does it impact what you do in the studio? I think the biggest impact has been the uh, kind of sensitivity that you or 
uh, sorry, that I that I work with. Because um, when you're working from observation, it, it's you have to look out for those little those little details. Um, you know, the angle that like a leaf takes, uh, what direction it grows in. It, it's little, you, you gain a sensitivity, and when you bring that back inside, um, it's kind of like a replenishment. Uh, and I think that gets reflected, like even even in structures like this, even in like uh, characters like this. You know, it's not the blue sky, but um, it's, there's some more complexity to it than that. So why does that sensitivity have to come back in the studio? Does it? it probably doesn't. I mean, for me, it does. I, I get a. I get a value out of it. Mm -hmm. I used to always be worried that my works were more hand fisted. And uh, once I started going outside and growing from nature, um, I just realized that my, my lines were, were getting cleaned up. There was, was a bit more decision making behind every mark. You were better at observing. It seems. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's. I think it's a. It's almost like a exercising a muscle. Right. I think uh, it seems like the precision is a lot higher, but you're allowing the line to do more of the work. You're allowing the gesture to take over in a lot of spaces. Whereas in the past. From what I've seen out of your on-site painting, it's been a little bit more heavily rendered. Yeah, uh, that might just come with uh, age, practice, uh, more hours doing it, where you learn how to uh, to get the paint to work for you, right? As opposed to fighting with it, working against it. Can you talk a little bit about some of the characters that appear in these uh, on-site paintings? Yeah, it's it's kind of funny how that works. Um, when you're sitting out there for you know, a few hours, you start to gain a repertoire with things that you're looking at. Before I should say, sorry. Um, and they kind of they become their own characters in the in the scene. You really. Well, when you start, when you're applying paint, you're, you're really starting to craft them into into the forms uh, and become more familiar with you. It's so I can get a better explanation of it. You get really familiar when you're looking at something with, with the object, um, but in your mind, you're also kind of you're kind of grouping it up to try to simplify it, try to make sense of it. Um, so in this like top left painting here, you're gonna see. Three distinct tree shapes. And it's almost like they're having a conversation with each other. Uh, it's almost like a, a figure a, a group of figures when you see this this group of trees, that group of trees, and this they seem pretty uh, separate on the canvas. Do you develop characters for these as you work? Not specific, not, not like, not a character like this guy. You know, you don't think of them the same way as this guy, but there's certainly like a hierarchy um, that starts to, to surface. This guy right here, this is a... Um, this still needs more work. I'm probably gonna go outside again with this canvas, but uh... Right now, this tree stump um, took them back inside and added those those branches that I I remember from being out there. So I kind of think of them as a, a Danny DeVito tree stump. Why is that? Um, just just how short it is, and also like the arrangement of his hair. It's almost like Danny DeVito's haircut. Definitely has that disheveled look. Yeah. I really like this little handle. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's for portability. Where do you usually go when you paint? Um, I just stick to the woods around here, around the campus. It's 
spent a lot of time behind the, uh, the new common, the commons area. There's a hiking trail that leads between that and the alumni. Like this. Uh, let's see. These, these two paintings um, are from that area, from that same hiking trail, I'd say. Mm -hmm. This is kind of on the trail itself. So how do you choose a location when you're painting? You walk in the woods for a while, what makes you stop and say, I want to paint uh, this stump or this tree? I look, I look for things that kind of provide a, a decent composition. Uh, so I'm kind of searching the, the landscape for, for these, these, these interesting compositions. I think this one uh, down here, um, that one is, is painted almost as is, as, as was on site, and uh, I, I really did like how there was this clearing that you have of dense woodland, and then uh, clearing, like a, a, a hole in the canopy, a hole in the treetops, and you have grass growing, um, where usually it's dirt like this, you just see dirt everywhere, dirt that leaves, um, and you had this, this tree that was leaning over, so it provided a kind of arch, I just thought it was a... It was a good place to, to you know, make a painting. So it's very intuitive. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, this this area is kind of almost in the same spot as the one seen in this charcoal image. Um, and I thought the kind of how the trail cuts through this cuts through this uh, the picture plan. And it forms kind of like this, this triangle that's, that's pushing against the left side. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was an interesting uh, image. And it just seemed to work well with all the different trees that you see scattered throughout. Yeah, it's very cinematic. I mean, it, it really pulls you through the composition. So when you go out into the woods, do you do a bunch of sketches before you start a painting? Or? Hmm. Yeah, let me, uh, let, me, let me dig out my studies. So this is probably one of the earlier ones. Um, it was me just looking at a bush and trying to figure out uh, how everything was working, where everything was growing, uh, what everything was entangled with, and it got pretty confusing. So I decided to kind of do more separate studies. So this one is, uh, what is that, like three, three, three grass stalks? Grass or weed stalks, you kind of this is when I was trying to really focus down in on the uh, on how things grew, how a leaf projected from a stem, how uh, the size of a leaf affected how it, it, it draped, where the, the little um, uh, like plant, plant veins, how they grew within the leaf itself. Um, let's see. Oh, this one. This was a fun one. This was sitting on the. This one I did sitting on the forest floor, and I was just drawing uh, with the ink uh, the different specimens I saw. So we had these different kinds of uh, little leaves, like little cloves, um, that kind of formed the, the the shorter specimens that you'll see, and then you had these. Uh, the grass that would kind of be all over the place, these uh, these long, like hair-like uh, blades of grass, and then you had these these grains, which uh, which are everywhere. I mean, you, 
you'll see they're a lot more dense than what's seen here when I was just trying to get different specimens. Mm -hmm. But there's a great variety of uh, plant life that you'll see out there. And just in like a few, a few feet, you'll see like a dozen different plant species. I think that's about it. Those are the most successful that, ones. What was that painted one? That one, that one we're not going to show. That one isn't embarrassing. No, 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 no. Alright, so this started out as a very decent drawing. And, uh, uh, I started applying, this is my first real venture into watercolors out there in the field. And, uh, I just could not get them to cope. Uh, the leaves are no way as neon green as this, and, uh, just painting different layers of color onto each other didn't work out, it didn't mix well. Um, so if you're going to do watercolors, I would say get stuff that you can mix together. Don't get the dry stuff. And, uh, I actually find this pretty exciting. So, I think these like fractal areas of color, you mm -hmm. know, where it, it almost looks like you're digitally fracturing this space and then you know, creating alternating colors throughout. Um, I actually find that really exciting, and it gives you a lot of avenues to like dig deeper into the space. Do you think it's a, an issue of the medium specifically? It might be. I mean, there's I there's no way. I don't think I can get back. I can't. I can't seed control from this medium. Uh, it, 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 like you have whole sections of space that are lost to me, and I can't get them back. I went to. Too, too thick, too deep with the uh, the watercolor in some areas. I lost entire um, branches, like things that I spent, you know, hours working on are just blown out, drained out, and uh, there's no way I'm gonna dig them up again. And you really want all of that detail. I did. This was this was supposed to act as a study for me, and I tried to push it further than that. And uh, yeah, these are the this this is what I these are the repercussions of that decision. Bit. Tell me about this guy right here. Uh, this is my latest work. Um, kind of came about when I was uh, trying to write a paper over the weekend, and a big part of a big part of that process was me doodling on the actual uh, page, and I made about you know a dozen different drawings of cats. Trying to, I guess, figure out how it actually looked like, um, how its head would sit on its shoulders, and it was just, just that whole problem-solving uh, issue going on for the duration of that paper. Um, so when I was done, I was back in the studio, and uh, you know, it just it just seemed like a natural progression go from doodling cows to making a, a drawing of cows. Um, all these cows are borrowed from uh, Rosa Bonnier. Uh, she's a French animal painter. And I try to I try to give every cow a book. I try to make them all individualistic from one another. Um, So like this guy, it's a little bit, it's a little bit meaner than the other cows. He looks like the uh, the Red Bull cow, the Red Bull bull. Uh, I like to call him a cow. This is kind of the, the sassy cow. This one here. She looks annoyed. She does. Oh, I mean, maybe, but she's she's the only cow that's eating on the page. The rest, the rest are confused, and then you have this. This one was just chewing cud. There's something really expressive about that eyebrow. Yeah. I, uh, when I was making the, the curve for the nose, um, I knew I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go too, too real with the cow. I thought that, uh, kind of, kind of giving it these human qualities. Or you know these, these figure-like qualities would, would make it more interesting. Of 
What about this character? That's the uh, that's the spaceman. I didn't I didn't want to make him I didn't want to make an astronaut. That's the one I didn't want to do. Uh, and almost not even human. He's almost kind of like a uh, a mashup of of. of um, but I wanted to make something that was that sat somewhere between a spaceman and a um, Advil, an Advil capsule. So uh, that's why he almost has no neck. It's almost just a head going straight into uh, like a torso. Um, so he's almost he's almost unthreatening in a way. He's, he, he's What's next for all of these? Uh, I'm gonna continue with the landscapes. Um, I think it's good as far as developing technique goes. Um, I find it's more fun to paint outside than to paint inside. You know, inside it gets kind of claustrophobic and. Uh, when you're out there, you're desperately trying to put paint on the canvas and make an image while inside you're, you're kind of, you're, you have all these distractions inside. Um, and I feel that uh, that kind of environment, it's tough to paint in. But I want to, I want to continue painting. And uh, I think that the drawing is just a more natural fit for, for indoors, you know. Um, I get most of my ideas at night. These are very... These, the drawings are very... Uh, spontaneous. They're not as... Uh, they're not as meticulous as you would think. They're kind of just coming up with on the spot. Um, or you're playing around with an idea and you're composing it on the spot adjustments here and there, and I think that's kind of the best fit uh, when, you're, when you're just drawing these lines, as opposed to when you're trying to, you know, mix colors outside, um, or mix uh, paint in general. So a lot of, a lot of the stress gets taken away when you're, when you're outside. I find the inside is kind of very stressful and dark. That's it.